Good morning. My name is Justin Jacobs. I'm a research specialist at the NDSU Williston Research and Extension Center, and I've been uh, working with intercrops since 2018, and I have extensive experience both on the research side as well as my personal farm and these production practices. And today we'll be talking primarily about uh, working with canola in in an intercrop situation. We will talk for a very brief slide on um, mustard as well. But what is intercropping? Intercropping is the growing of two or more crops together in a close proximity. This is not a new practice or new idea. Instead, it's one that's kind of getting some renewed interest. In fact, uh, its roots can be traced back to the Native American culture uh, in what was called the Three Sisters, where a mound of dirt was uh, piled up, corn was planted in the middle, green beans surrounding the corn, and then squash surrounding the mound. The corn would grow up and provide a natural trellis system for the green beans. The green beans would provide nitrogen back for the corn, and the squash was utilized as a pest deterrent uh, to keep anything out from getting to the corn or the beans. Intercropping has also been used in uh, forage and hay production, most commonly with uh, oats and peas or barley and peas to increase the protein content of the hay, uh, as well as increase the overall uh, dry matter. Another intercropping practice uh, one might consider is uh, relay cropping. This is traditionally practiced in the uh, corn and soybean states uh, where rye might be planted in the fall and then drilled directly into in the spring with something like soybeans. Uh, then using specialized headers, the rye would be taken off in July or August and the soybeans would sprout up from underneath the stubble canopy and then would be harvested later on when they reach maturity. Uh, this involves two planting passes and two harvest passes. But today we're going to be talking exclusively about a mixed grain intercropping system where we can actually further increase the efficiency from going from two planting passes to two harvest passes to now one planting pass and one harvest pass system, but yet we're still achieving two different crops off of one field, increasing the efficiency of that field overall. Mixed grain intercropping has also shown multiple benefits, uh, one of them being the increase in diversity both above ground and below ground. Now with, instead of just a monoculture root system with singular root exudates, now we have multiple root exudates as a result of having uh, two different uh, species. There are some production practices that can also be improved with a mixed grain intercropping system, such as in a pea and canola system, the canola can act as that natural trellis system to help hold the peas up and reduce the lodging typically seen in a monoculture pea situation. When we're talking about intercropping, there's two terms that'll pop up fairly regularly. One is LER or the land efficiency ratio and the other is over yielding. Both can be used to measure the productivity of an intercrop system. Uh, the LER helps define whether or not we are actually uh, doing any better by producing two crops than if we were to produce one crop. In a monocrop situation, our LER value will be a 1.0 or 100% efficient. In an intercrop system, we are looking to get a value of greater than 1.0, hopefully something like 1.1, 1.2, or a 1.3. So how do we make an intercrop system work? There's a couple of rules to that, that I think that we need to adhere to and we're trying to establish a successful intercrop scenario. One is we should pick a primary crop and use this crop to manage all of our other decisions on this, on this particular field or in this particular setting. If we know that we're going to 
cater our production towards canola, then we know how to treat our fertility and how to treat our seeding rate. This helps make some of the decisions later on down the road better. And when we're looking at an intercrop, ultimately we need to find crops that have varying seed sizes, but have similar maturity to one another. Because we wanna be able to combine at one time rather than having to do two different passes of the combine. And we also need different seed sizes so we can separate them easily. Pictured are chickpea and flax and peas and canola. And if we can't separate, then we're doing nothing more than growing expensive cow feed at this point. And separation does not need to be an expensive or complicated process. In fact, we can utilize some of the tools that might be sitting in the tree row right now because they were used for uh, separating weed seed out of our small grains before or had other purposes, but now they can be repurposed for for separating out intercrops. Um, pictured as a rotary screen. Uh, they're very affordable and that can be found at auction sales um, for, for a pretty good price and can be utilized uh, rather easily. They do have some drawbacks as far as they're a single source of separation and you might have some larger chaff going off with your peas or some smaller weed seeds going off with your canola. Similar situation with the quick clean pictured on the right. So we actually hosted a trial that started in 2019 and continued into 2020. We had uh, two we had two different locations, uh, two trials in Williston, one trial in Carrington. Uh, the Williston trial was an irrigated and a non-irrigated trial. And then in, in Williston, the plots were planted in an alternating row pattern. So one row of peas next to a row of canola, row of peas, row of canola. And in Carrington, everything was planted in the same row, same rows together. We had six total treatments. We had two monocrop situations where we were using peas planted at 180 pounds per acre as one of our checks and canola planted at four pounds to the acre. You'll notice that we are using a clear field canola variety. This is so that we can um, utilize Imazimox as one of our weed control options in this intercrop scenario. Then we had four different planting ratios combining the peas and canola. The first number in the ratio is going to always be the P rate, and the second number will always be the canola rate. Then we looked at three different rates of fer fertility, use, uh, utilizing the canola fertilizer requirements as our check. So our 100% rate would be 120 pounds of N applied. And then we had a 50% rate and a 0% rate. All, all plots received 30 pounds of sulfur, but we use a potassium sulfate source so not as to add additional nitrogen to the 0% rate on top of what was already present in the soil. There were some interesting results. And if we look at some of the combined results from 2019 and 2020, this is looking at both the dryland Williston and the dryland Carrington um, averaging across all three fertilizer rates. We see that in an intercrop scenario, across across all three fertilizer rates, on average, we were able to achieve over yielding or efficiency greater than an individual monocrop. Whereas if you break it down into the individual components, uh, whereas we are yielding just about 2,700 pounds of peas, our greatest pea yield in an intercrop scenario was only 1,600 pounds, but we added an additional 1,200 pounds of canola on top of that. And when we're looking at canola production, I think some of the best ratios are when we're looking at a 50-50 rate or a one-third rate of peas with two-thirds of canola. Those showed the greatest 
the greatest return for canola production. Then we, when we break it apart and look at the individual fertilizer rates, um, we see that as we decreased our fertilizer, our canola production actually dropped off, but our P yields increased as we dropped our fertilizer rates. Overall, we can, or additionally, we can see that even cutting our fertilizer from 120 pounds of N to 60 pounds of N, we are still able to achieve combined canola and pea yields over the individual monocrop uh, yields. And, and looking at an economic side of this can be kind of difficult because there can be multiple factors that play into the economic analysis of an intercrop. You are no longer looking at just one singular crop and one singular set of expenses. Now you're trying to combine two different sets of expenses into the production of, of this sort of system. One thing to note is that in a 100% fertility uh, regimen, we're looking at roughly a gross expense of about $300 to the acre, a little less than, but even by cutting down to 60 pounds of nitrogen or going to that 50% fertility, we are able to cut our cost of production down to closer to 250 in some of the $250 per acre in some of the inner crop scenarios. Um, as we see, it costs less to grow peas, straight peas, than it does an intercrop, but it costs about the same amount to grow an intercrop as it does to grow straight canola. This trial that we'll talk about here was hosted up in Crosby, North Dakota last year. Uh, we looked at two different rates of peas, two different rates of lentils across two different rates of canola. And everything was planted at the same time, harvested at the same time, and then separated post-harvest. This particular uh, chart will look at the individual yields as well as their resultant uh, LER values. And as you can see, aside from three, three, uh, three combinations, we achieved an LER value of greater than 1.0. Uh, the full report can be found in the Williston Research Extension Center's annual report from 2022. Uh, there's a full write-up on this trial in there. Similarly, another crop that we looked at in combination with the peas and the lentils was mustard and we're utilizing much lower rates of mustard than what would be recommended. Um, however, mustard should be looked at because the economic benefits of mustard are slightly better than canola. And so on top of, or so despite the low yields of mustard, the economic benefits may bring some merit to a mustard intercrop scenario. And as seen on the far right, we were able to achieve LER values of greater than 1.0 across all mixes with mustard. I truly believe that uh, peas and canola are one of the easiest uh, crop combinations to start with when it comes to looking at intercropping consider this uh, to be the beginner the beginner mix. Uh, it can be customized very e easily and it can show a wealth of benefits both on the economic and production side. Um, reach out to me at any time, call or text with any questions. Um, please reach out with an email I believe uh, Charlie and TJ will be relaying any questions to me and I'll be doing my best to answer those as they come in. Thank you again for letting me present.